next few days, and Amir Tzashem will continue this week as we have already to discuss Shema, the fundamental, powerful, inspirational paragraphs of Shema. In Shema, we do something that we don't do the rest of davening. The rest of davening, I am asking God for something about kasha. I am praising God. I'm shevach. I am thanking God. Hoda'a. That's not Shema. Shema is a declaration of emuna. For sure, the first pasuk, and then the responsibilities that we have to do mitzvot to be rewarded ultimately for those mitzvot. So while it's part of davening in the context of tefillah, it's not just that the tefillah that we're used to. And in fact, we take a break from Shema in which we, we we've gotten the chance over the last few days and we have continue here to Hashem this week as well to focus on Shema. You know, when we say Shema, it is fundamentally different than everything else we do during Davani. It's not a tefillah. During tefillah, I'm usually asking God about kasha. I am praising God. I am thanking God. Shavach and Hoda. I don't do that in Shema. Shema is a declaration of emuna. For sure, the first pasuk. And then the responsibility we have towards mitzvot, the reward we get for mitzvot. So while it's part of the context of tefillah, we actually, during Shema, we take a break from tefillah. Because tefillah, we are usually talking to God. But in Shema, God is talking to us. And in fact, the tour when describing the halachas of Shema, it explains that we are supposed to read Shema like a letter we're getting from the king, our marching orders. How do we see ourselves in this world? How do we see ourselves in, in the mission we have in this world? We break from the rest of the pattern of tefillah, of which bakasha and shevach and hoda'a. And here Shema is actually where we are talking, uh, getting a lesson from Hashem, reminding us of this mission. And to accentuate this point, I want to just talk about one famous story of Shema. There are many, many stories of Shema with, throughout Chazal and throughout the rabbinic literature and Gemara. But the story is about the death of Rabbi Akiva. And there's a lot, a lot to talk about in this Gemara. And I just want to share one aspect. The Gemara tells us, of course, that as Rabbi Akiva, one of the Asura Harugi Malchus, the 10 martyrs, is being killed by the Romans. His Talmidim say to him, Rabbi Ad Khan, really? How could this be? You're, you're, you're getting killed and you're being makabal amalchus shamayim. And he says to him, what do you mean? Kol yamayda, my whole days, I wanted to fulfill the pasuk of b'chol nafshecha. And now I get the chance. And he's marich, the word echad, he elongates the word echad until he dies. What do we understand from this story of Rabbi Akiva? Why shema? So again, shema is a fundamental acceptance of emuna, But it's more than that. Rabbi Akiva is telling his students, he is saying Shema, even though things didn't work out the way that we wanted to, to say, to say that everything comes from God, even when it doesn't work out, is what his students don't even understand. Really, Rabbi? And he says to them, yes, it's not just that I see the hand of, uh, uh, that, that I see Shema and that I'm mekabal uh, Shemai. Everything in our lives, the good and the bad, it's all from God. And in fact, the Mishnah Berura explains that when we say Shema, there's a wild halacha. The Mishnah Berura brings down that when I say Shema, I am mechaving b'shashu korea Shema, I am mechabal amalchus shamayim, all the mitzvos, even lios neherag al kiddush Hashem. It's wild. Even to say that I would give my life for God. When I say Shema, what I am doing is reminding myself it sounds extreme, but that when I say Shema, it is a moment that I remove myself from this world for a second. And I remind myself, I'm not thanking God. I'm not asking God for something. I am reminding myself that I am here for God, that God runs the world, and that I am a partner with Hashem to impact this world, and that I will do whatever it takes to create an impact in this world. And that's what I do during Shema. I step back and I realize whatever God would ask me to do, I would do. That's what I say in the first Pasuk. That's what I say throughout Shema, the, this, this, this declaration of Emuna. So the next time we say Shema, we should have it in mind to realize that I am part of this world, that God has, has gifted me with an ability to be in this world, and that I will do whatever it takes to continue to make an impact in this world.